Hello everybody, we've moved into a different section now and just the other side of the river is an enormous, enormous herd of wildebeest. Now, they looked imminently like they were going to cross where they are. They are well, seemingly about 7,000 kilometers away, but the only other view we had was taken up by some much more patient people who waited where we first started this afternoon. But we're going to wait and see what happens. As Graham pans off to the sort of right-hand side, what you're going to see is the herd and the extent of it and some of them moving away. I don't think that's their preferred crossing spot. I think they'd quite like to come over where they did yesterday, uh, where that particularly uh, incompetent crocodile failed to kill uh, any of them. And that was basically right next to where we parked now. So we'll see what happens. They do tend to be very much affected by where the vehicles are parked. So if, if they look like they're going to cross in a particular place, the vehicles park, and then they're unlikely to do um, sort of, they're unlikely to try and get past the cars. And so, yeah, there's no question the number of vehicles here is having an effect. But uh, I've been quite impressed with how sensitive people have been about not blocking them when they are actually on the move. So we'll see what happens here. I think uh, we're learning as we go along here, and it seems to be that the main aim here is to be as patient as possible, and that your patience will then be rewarded. Hello, Donna. You say, what is the score? Crocs, three. Zebras, minus one. Uh, Wildebeest, three. Hepa is minus one. Um, Donna, it really is difficult to say. Like I say, we're completely inexperienced. We've watched what can only be described as a lackadaisical and fairly effort-free fat galumphing crocodile here last week, at least yesterday, making very poor attempt to catch wildebeest, and we thought maybe it was more difficult than it looked on all the documentaries. Then, today, well, there's a zebra coming across here, Graham. You won't be able to get him, but he's going to pop out over here. It's swimming. Yes, sw indeed, swimming. Yes, not walking on the water. Um, sw swimming. <laughs> and... <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Graham, for a second there, thought that we had found the, the zebra's answer to the Messiah and that they were going to walk across Ooh, the water. Here we go, and we've got a crocodilian about to devour one of the zebras behind where we can't see it. And Charlie, you say, yeah, Charlie, sorry, you say your heart is always in your mouth when you watch these crossings. Uh, yes, mine too. It is absolutely astounding. It is completely like running a gauntlet. Especially, so just back to my story before Graham spotted, um, <laughs> never mind what Graham spotted. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, so back to the question we had, we had the, <laughs> we had the incompetent crocodile here yesterday, didn't catch anything. Then we watched an amazing scene earlier today. I think we are actually in the right place. There seems to be some movement around here. What about popping forward? Yes, we can go Robert, forward. Robert, can we go forward? There's going to be some jerking around, everyone. Paul, you want to know if Gnus cross the river in the night time? I'm not actually sure, to be honest. We were wondering about that. It would be, seem to be a particularly silly thing for them mm, to do. This is no good, eh? But, um, yeah, we're going to have to go back. Sorry, Robert. Thank you very much. Yeah, they are swimming there. I don't suppose we can get a view there. Um, right, while we try and get a view, everyone, yeah, everyone is now racing around to where we are. Yes, good one, Robert, good one. Get in there. You can see there's a, you need to have the driving skills of Lewis Hamilton here. Okay, right, we're going to go back to Brent and Sandile for now. Let's find out what's going on here. We'll try and get into a decent position. Well, we got it now. There's a huge crocodile there. Okay, we're going to stay with us, everybody. Um, Lewis Hamilton over there got his vehicle in. Yeah, okay, we're actually set up very nicely here. How's it going there, Graham? Good. You see nicely? Okay. Do you see the right. in the front quickly, the quickly finish what I was going to say to you. So, today we watched a crocodile kill three, or different crocodiles kill three or four zebra and wildebeest. So they didn't look quite as incompetent as the behemoth from the deep over here. One of whom I suspect quite strongly is sitting there in that water. There are two of them there, two huge crocs there. 
And Carrie, you're wondering how often they eat. Carrie, eh, some of them will go two years without eating. So they'll eat a huge amount during the actual season and then they stop eating. Sorry. Excuse me. Sorry, we just need to um, we just need to shout at somebody who's getting in our way. <laughs> Can we not see anything now? Oh, I can't see the crocs. Okay, we can't see the crocs. We need to tell him to move. He must move. Oh. Oh. Hello, cat in Tampa. You say, well, crocodiles only eat on the beach or in the water. Cat, they eat almost universally in the water. They don't eat in the on the beach. They can't eat on the beach. Sorry everybody, we're just trying to figure out what's going on here. We've clearly got into quite a good position and <laughs> you may be able to hear that it doesn't sound unlike downtown Los Angeles right now. Um, but we'll figure it out. We'll muddle our way along here. Now that fellow is being shouted at by our guy, Hello, P. Hart. Um, you want to know what speed the river travels? Well, we think the river travels probably... Uh, it's a gently flowing river. There are a couple of rapids here. I mean, I don't know meters per second how fast it's moving, but I think it's probably... Um, I don't know, maybe moving at about three or four meters a second. It's not very fast. Hello, Janet. The reason they make everybody um, travel in a covered vehicle is a very good one. Um, it's because, basically, uh, one hesitates to use the term free-for-all, but it is certainly the term that comes to, comes to mind first. And basically, you can drive into this car in the same way that you can drive into the Kruger Park on your own. You don't have to have a guide. You can, you're free to do what you want. There's no real regulation of the guiding or the activities, and so it's just safer to make sure that people have a roof over their cars, same as in the Kruger. You know that on the private concessions, like Jumo, where you've been watch watching beautiful Sindila, um, well, you know that it's perfectly safe, but that's because Brent is trained, and Steph's trained, and I'm trained, and Jamie's trained, and that makes it relatively safe. Here, you don't know what you're going to get. Let's go back to Sindila. We're going to mess around here and see if we can't see what happens with these wildebeest. It's definitely going to be worth waiting here, though. So let's go back and look at our favourite cat with me old pal Brent Leo Smythe. <laughs>